Hey, good evening, guys. I have not been on this page going live in a minute. I meant to tag. Let me see if it'll let me do it while I'm up here. Oh, give me a second. If you come on, I am attempting to tag my other page. If it will let me. Hey, guys, give me just a minute. We are talking about your brand. Let me do it. Okay, well, I tried. Done. It's not gonna let me do it. So guys, we are talking about your brand DNA. Make sure that you tag somebody. If you are a woman in business and maybe you are feeling the pressure of uh, figuring out who you are as a brand, you're watching everybody and you're seeing all the good stuff and maybe you feel it's leaving you in a space of uncertainty about what you're called to do, what your purpose to do and, and what to do um, in your business. We're going to talk about that on tonight. So I, I on this page in quite some time. Let me get this Wi-Fi off here. In quite some time, but I came on my personal page intentionally. Um, I wanted to invite you guys to wholly and completely live your best life. Wholly and completely live. And when you when you think about that, I mean to the fullest. What does that look like for you? If you come back even on the replay. Put it in the comments. I don't think many of us take enough time to really, really think about what living our best life to the fullest really means. So oftentimes when we think about living our best life, we think about, you know, I'm partying, you know, I'm clubbing or whatever the case may be, um, a form of entertainment. But I believe that there to living your best life. And I want you guys to really, really think about what does that mean? What does it look like for you? If you could remove all of the limitations that may be presently in the way of creating what your heart really desires, what would that look like? Like, have you ever taken an opportunity to really and truly write that down? Like, when you're writing what your best life, you're at the fullest, would look like when you're writing it don't think about whatever it is that you're unable to do right now right that's not where i want you guys to think from hey jenny how are you dear i don't want you to think from a space of you know what's available or currently presently available for you to do right now i want you to write that down but i came on this page tonight because i wanted to invite you um, to do that for those of you who come on you may have seen the graphic that I um, I posted on this particular page when I was announcing that I was going to come on. And on the graphic, you'll see, um, it'll say, um, let's talk about your brand DNA. And then a around the graphic is like a collage of all these different pictures of me. And um, it wasn't in vain. <laughs> um, it was actually for a purpose because I believe that you are your brand. I have been saying that now for the last four to five years that I've been online um, talking about branding and helping my clients with branding. And the more, hey, my Isha dear, the more I dig into branding, the more I work with women, you know, helping them build their brand, I am even more certain now that your brand is not your website, your logos, and your pretty pics. You'll hear me say it all the time. You are your brand. So as far as the graphic that I put up with all the different pictures of me, so there's one with like I'm in a microphone. In that particular picture, I was actually um, co-hosting an event with maybe about a thousand people in the audience. And I had been asked uh, spontaneously to pray over the audience. Now I did my own prayers, you know, at home, but like praying over a, a large stadium of people like that, I had never done that. But one of the things that I remember from that picture was me saying, um, I come against the spirit of lack. 
Now, guys, when I finish the prayer and I'm walking off the stage, I'm like, did you just tell them you're, you're coming against the spirit of lack? Like, where did that come from? So I'm going somewhere. You guys stay with me. There's another picture of me um, where I'm actually teaching. So I'm in class. And if you look at the sign behind me, it says rich habits. That sign says rich habits. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you, dear? And I'm actually at a three-day retreat that I held for my mastermind came uh, to visit. There's another where I'm sitting in a chair. Uh, I had gone to another event where I was one of the presenters. And if I had had an opportunity, if it was enough space up there, even if I had um, some of the things that were from my past, I would have put that on that particular graphic. One thing in particular, when I got ready to do this broadcast that I was thinking about, when I was thinking about my brand and the actual graphic, I would have put this, um, we had this green uh, little booklet from when I was in the sixth grade, and it was a book of poems. And I found it maybe about 10 years ago. I went and read what I had wrote as a poem, and I was like, I mean, why were you even thinking on in that space at that particular age? I remember a guy named Wilson Busby. So for those of you who come on and you're from my hometown, you may remember Miss Stalls, you know, our teacher making that part of an assignment and she actually published the, the poetry book. But that's one picture that would have been up there. Um, Raquel, how are you, dear? And guys, let me know if I'm clear. Let me know if, if it's clear for you all. I also would have put uh, probably a picture of me outside skating in my driveway. So I don't know how many of you are like me, but I learned to skate on the concrete. So I, I didn't learn at the skating rink. I learned outside on the concrete by myself. I grew up as an only child. I would have had that picture on the graphic. And then another picture that I probably would have had on the graphic was... Um, from an incident where I was dating a guy in high school who pushed me down and I fell into like a small like ditch. And I remember looking like really shocked, like what happened? And he was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And of course I'm thinking nobody, who would push anybody into like a small ditch? It, it wasn't a deep ditch, but it's, that's besides the point. Um, I probably would have had that picture in there. and because all of that is my brand DNA. Now, in actuality, that was the beginning stages of me not understanding, but experiencing um, domestic violence. So, so many girls in high school experience it and maybe it's blown off. For me, I just couldn't, I was like, well, yeah, he gotta be sorry because who pushes anybody, you know, down? But when I thought back on the incident, you know, not long after, I was at um, a day party, not the kind of day party y'all go to right now, right? It wasn't that kind of day party. It was like a little country party. And um, I remember him asking me, like, what are you doing here? And so when I, as time progressed and I began to put two and two together, I was like, he did mean to push me. But guys, I was so innocent in my thinking at that time. And, you know, just not thinking that anyone would do that. Why am I sharing all of this with you all? I'm sharing this because the pictures on that graphic are all of who I am. And just like my pictures, if you were to place specific pictures and events about your life up there, you would be detailing um, who you are as a brand or how your brand has been formed. For those of you, this is your first time on a broadcast with me. First of all, somebody let me know if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? If this is your first time, you've never been on a broadcast with me, I ask you to do a couple things. One, if I say something that blesses your business or your life at any measure throughout the broadcast, just hit the heart or the like, show your girl a little love. Also, I ask that you hit that little share button. It may be on your right hand side or maybe your left to share a message. And thirdly, Y'all let me know if you can hear me. This one is going to be so good. I have really taken the time to break down uh, the concept of DNA and why I call this your brand DNA because I believe that you are very much your brand. The business that you're building, 
your life is so intertwined, you know, with building your brand. So I want to talk about DNA from a scientific standpoint, you know, what your DNA is. So if we were, many of you have heard about DNA, maybe not as it relates to building a brand, but your DNA um, is the blueprint for who we are is for who we will become. So when I looked at the definition of DNA as it relates to us as humans, our body, our physical DNA, or our body's genetic DNA, it is the blueprint for who we are and instructions for who we will become. And so when I think about it, it could be like your eyes, you know, how long you're going to be uh, at a certain length as a child, different things of that nature. And when I think about your DNA in that respect, I found that um, your DNA is like your genetic makeup, your genetic makeup. So let's think about DNA like this. And guys, first I want to tell you that you can change your DNA. So scientists have proven that you can actually change your DNA. When we think about our DNA, it's things like from genetics, our family, things that this is just how it's going to be. Her eyes are going to be blue. Her eyes are going to be brown. You know, she's going to have brown hair, our DNA. But scientists have proved that there are parts of our DNA that can actually be changed. So before our DNA is ever impacted by that I'm going to name for you, we actually have a setting. Right. So when you're born, your DNA has a setting that's saying, OK, maybe the eyes will be light brown in the beginning and then they'll turn dark brown. Maybe she'll have brown hair. Um, it's, it's already set. It's like a default setting. And if you've been following me, maybe I don't know how many of you follow me on my business page, but um, that's uh, Facebook.com slash build with Tanya. I did a broadcast called um, Destiny by Design or destiny by default, destiny by design, or destiny by default. And when I think about our original DNA, how we're supposed to turn out, um, when I think about that as our default setting. So some of the genetics will be from your grandmother, or your grandfather, your mother, her mother, his, your father, his father. Those things are our default settings, right? But there's this thing called epigenics, epigenics, that has proven that there are things outside of our normal DNA that impact us and cause us to change our DNA. I want to read some of those for you guys. And did I, I don't think I did an introduction. So I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a growth strategist, business coach, and mentor to women in business just like yourself helping them brand, build, and profit in their business. I function from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset, personal growth, and business building. And when I'm sharing with you guys tonight, you're going to hear like why I teach abundance mindset, why I think it's so important and impactful for the evolution and the growth that we're going to do, in, not just in our business, but also in our life. So that's who I am as a nutshell, and I wanted to talk to you guys about a concept that I teach um, under the dynamics of branding with my clients. And I started teaching it online maybe about it's four or five years ago now, but branding has always been my thing. So I owned a brick and mortar business um, for 10 years prior to consulting full time. And at that time, I was branding my business. I just didn't know the term branding. So some of the things we do is the term for it. It's like a doctor. So you may go to the doctor and say you have a specific issue. And then the doctor may give you the um, doctor's terminology for it. So sometimes we're doing things in our business, but we may not know the professional name for it. So as I began to consult and coach, I was like, I've been branding like for a long time. And I realized that branding was my lane. Like it was loved above anything else. And that's mainly because branding is about people. It's about 
the person who owns the business. Um, it's about the vision of the person who owns the business. If there are staff members and employees, it's about the culture of the place. It's about your ideal customers, your perfect people. And everything that I do is about people. So I love the people process of business building. Actually, uh, one of the things that we were known for in our community was our customer service and professionalism. But I'm sharing that with you all because figuring out who you are is going to help you tremendously. Not just you, but your business and brand and who is supposed to help you tremendously in your business. Because what's actually happening in today's times, people are so busy watching other people that many of you are forgetting what your vision really was, what your dream really was, what your idea of success really was. And I feel that when you get in a space where you can get really, really clear on what you desire, I know it has been a blessing for me. Because when you come online, there are so many people. There are so many people doing similar things to what you do. There's so much inspiration. There are so many truths and beliefs and concepts. And if you're not careful, you will, you will lose what yours actually is. You will lose your center. But there's no greater place for you to build your business than from a space of understanding who you are as a brand. And your brand has a DNA. And has a, I read that for you guys um, just a moment ago. It contains a blueprint for who you are and instructions for who you will become. So some of that is in, you know, the vision that you decide. But vision is like an internal thing. It's not necessarily this, oh, I'm going to do this, or I saw that and I'm going to do that. Vision is really internal. It's part of your makeup. If you're going to do this thing and get in a space of what I call flow. Now, some people think of flow as in, um, I'm just going to be random. I'm just going to do spontaneous things. I'm just going to pick the next idea. And that's what I'm going to do for my business. But flow is really embracing what that next version of your business, you and your business are supposed to evolve into and although the word flow sounds great it isn't always um easy now it is simple but it isn't always easy if you follow me i did a uh, i remember now that i did a broadcast on the difference in simple and easy but oftentimes it becomes um even more difficult when we aren't we, when we don't have clarity when we aren't clear when we're watching other people too much building their brand because we we get off of we get out of our lane we get out of our flow now that's not to say that you don't seek wise counsel consultants like myself strategists um mentors things of that nature but your mentors and coaches are not there to necessarily change your vision they're there to help you fulfill it they're there to help you get clarity on what it really is how that looks in uh producing a it, not to give you 50,000, you know, ideas that are not centered around who you are as a brand. So I, when I was thinking, which is when you, those are the external things that impact your DNA. So here's what I, I, I learned too, guys. So your DNA, one second, your DNA is like a ladder. So it's got like these, I think it's called helix or helix, something like that. But they're intertwined together and they go in the shape of a ladder. So when we think about epigenics, which is the things that are external, that are not in the original makeup of your DNA, that are impacting your DNA, that can change your DNA, um, things like your diet, physical activity, um, psych psychological stress. When I read that psychological stress can change working on night shifts, goodness. And immediately when I saw that, I thought about um, the scripture, as a man thinks. I thought about abundant thinking because all of those are scenarios, the psychological stress, working on night shifts. All of those are scenarios that may be giving the body and the mind undue 
rest or undue stress rather and causing your actual DNA to change. It's another reason why I talk about the importance of what you, who you're listening to, the activities that you're doing, the environment. Those things can actually change our physical makeup. So I feel like if some negative things can cause your DNA to change, then there are definitely some positive things that can shift and change your DNA as well. I don't know if, uh, I'm trying to see, let me see if I can connect this and see if, um, see if it's clear because I'm in the boonies. I just be pushing through this terrible, let me not speak negative, this excellent internet that's here where I am. I just push through it. Hey there. I, I see numbers and then they go away. So if someone could let me know if you can actually hear me. I'm trying to see who that is. Jessica, can you hear me? Can you put it in the comments if you can hear me? Someone? Or I will log off and have to figure this out from a different perspective. If someone can hear me, I know there's a delay. Uh, let me know if you can hear me before I continue to move forward. We're talking about your your DNA, your brand DNA, your makeup, and you understanding that you are your brand. Like the things that you are encountering and experiencing are building your brand. You can hear awesome, 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 are building your brand uh, tremendously. So I was sharing with you all some scientific facts. Y'all got to stay with me. I told you to bring pen and paper, right? So I'm a teacher at heart and I like to talk. I like to keep into concepts and thought processes instead of taking you all over the place so that you can fully understand what when people are saying branding and they're talking about logos and websites and pretty pics there's a space that you have to get to before you get to all of that because those what you learn about who you are as a brand dictates what you put on the logo it, because then the logo is going to begin to attract a specific individual. And if you don't understand who you, who you are as a brand and who your perfect people are, then you'll put up a logo that doesn't fit. I saw someone who changed their logo the other day and, and they had side by side pictures of their old logo and their new logo. And this journey, they've actually taken a small course with me before, but, um, as I watched their journey, the way their logo has changed was very much needed. It very much speaks to who she has evolved into and who she desires to evolve into and who she desires to attract. So I share with you guys that um, epigenetics actually change your DNA and it's by different external factors. So as I was studying about not your brand DNA, but the scientific part of your DNA, I came across this um, diagram and it's called Maslow's Hierarchy. It's a psychology theory and it's a five stage model of growth, basically. So it's a triangle. I actually have it. I don't know if you guys can see it here. I actually have it drawn on the board here, the triangular part, just to give you guys a visual as I'm as I'm speaking about it. But it's five stages of growth. So what he's proven is that everybody, you, me, every one of us have needs. We, we all as human have uh, different things that we need in order to kind of be whole, which y'all know, I don't know if y'all know I'm a kingdom believer, but we need Jesus as one of them, but that's not up there. So at the bottom of the triangle is um, our physiological needs like food, water, warmth, rest, like everybody across the planet needs these things. When certain things are not in order, it impacts our growth. So they call them deficiency needs and growth needs. And what I find oftentimes is that when we get to one area of the needs, the, the five things that everybody needs, we, we kind of stop. Right there. So at the bottom is the physiological needs, food, water, warmth, rest, uh, the need for safety, security, safety. Uh, the next one is belongingness and love. Intimate relationships and friends fall under that category. The next one is the need for esteem. 
I know we may say I don't need anybody to applaud me, all that other stuff, but affirmation and things like that are natural basic needs, especially by this particular theory that um, Maslow's hierarchy proved and esteem like prestige or feelings of accomplishment. And then at the top of the hierarchy is self-actualization, which is the part that I want to focus on because what I find often is the higher version of you is always asking you, is always sending you signals that it wants to go into design mode. Hey, Kenya, how are you, dear? The higher version of you is always sending you signals that it wants to go into design mode. Now, here are some of the signals. When you feel stuck, somebody scribe it in the comments and share this out. The, the highest version of you or the next higher version of you is always sig sending you signals that it wants to go into design mode. Remember I said we have destiny by design or we have destiny by default, just like our DNA. Originally, our DNA is set on default. So these are just the things from our parents and our genes. And I would break all of that stuff down, but it may be a little too much for the broadcast. But I love like studying those things like... Um, your your DNA uh, splits cells and all that stuff. But I'm not going to go there with you guys because that may be a little too much for the broadcast. But those are the type of things that I absolutely love. And studying uh, abundance mindset and uh, wealth, different things. I don't know. And I'm kind of jumping over to something else for a moment because I shared on a recent broadcast that the thing that pushed me to point where I knew I wanted to teach and talk about abundance mindset was when I researched my family tree. So back in 2001, I researched my family tree and I actually stopped like short and center of uh, researching my family tree because what I started seeing was actually making me uncomfortable. So the stories I was hearing about some of the women in generate, you know, several generations before me and some of the hardships um, that they had, it, it was just stressful. But I started seeing these patterns between the women, like they were all doing very similar things. And the things that were common were their relationships. They had poor relationships and their wealth or the lack of their wealth. And when I realized those common threads, I began to study relationships heavily. This is before I uh, became a certified life coach. And I began to study wealth. And in the process of studying wealth, I, I really understood that much of wealth building was here in our mindset, which is what led to abundant thinking. And it's probably why I you know, got certified from being a business coach to um, also a life coach. So I love everything about the mind. And... For those of you who are believers, scripture says, as a man thinks, so is he. So everything that is your reality right now, you thought it into existence. So your thoughts turn into actions or your feelings, your thoughts turn to feelings and your feelings turn to actions, right? So, you know, if you're feeling a certain way and you're thinking about it, it leads to what you do or don't do next I'm, I'm moving off of that. I just wanted to share with you guys where the the concept of me teaching my clients abundance mindset came from because I realized that it doesn't matter how many strategies I give you, which are excellent strategies. If your mindset is not in alignment with the strategy, it's not going to go down. It's not happening. So I was sharing with you guys that the highest version of you, of yourself, is always send, sending you a signal that it wants to go into design mode. And here are some of the signals. One, when you feel stuck, it is the higher version of you inviting you to let's get into create mode. Let's get into um, when great ideas come to you. That's the highest version of you asking you to step up, asking you to reach up, asking you to embrace that next version of you that's going to be required for you to do it. Um, when you think about great ideas, like 
buying a new home, buying big ticket items for your parents, for your spouse, for your kids, all of those ideas, they are invitations for you to step into the version of yourself. When you think about things like um, working less and earning more, it's invitations because all of those things are going to require a higher version of you. When you think about writing big checks to charities and things that really impact your heart that will, will require you to have another zero behind it, it's an invitation from the highest version of you to, to create, to move into design mode and step out of default mode. I shared with you all that a couple of weeks ago, I did a training call, um, is it Destiny? Design or destiny by default. So my entire purpose for coming on this page this evening was to invite you to step fully and completely into a life that you love and that you deserve, like to step into the next highest version of you. So when we think about Maslow's theory, remember at the top of the theory, and one of the things he stated was uh, the lower levels of the hierarchy of the theory, the five um, stages, the lower levels have to be met first. Now, some of them I kind of disagree. I think that some things can can be met um, before others, but because most often we're focusing on some of the physiological needs, whenever that higher version of us invites us, gives us an invitation to, you know, go into the Fifth hierarchy on that triangle, um, hey, Keisha, how are you, dear, which is self-actualization. And what that means is your full potential. Your full potential. And many of us resist the full potential all the time because it requires us to actually change our DNA. It requires us to change some of the things that were passed down to us, you know, in the beginning or from our environments. And most of us resist those things because one, many of those opportunities are uncomfortable. Many of the opportunities to step into the next version of who you are, the higher version of who you are, it's uncomfortable. But I want you to think about, I want to challenge you to think about it like this. We're either going to be uncomfortable stepping into the higher version of ourselves or we're going to be uh, uncomfortable in the uncomfortable version that we're operating in now. So every time you resist, and I, I feel that resistance can come in many forms, procrastination, blame. And, I, and I'm going to share why I say blame because I was, when I was, to blame my spouse for us not being where we should be. Now, there were some things that, you know, he could definitely do to help our situation as a couple, but there were also things, hey, Patrick, that I could do individually, right? And so sometimes we'll blame external factors and outside people for where we are because actually it's it becomes our excuse not to step into the next highest version of ourselves. It doesn't require us to change anything. It doesn't require us to do anything different. So how does all of this tie in with your brand DNA? The same hierarchy, Maslow's hierarchy that I share with you all, if you think about your business, your business has basic needs. So it may not be food, water, warmth, and rest. It may be things like... Um, a business license or um, an accountant, an LLC, you know, to even growing your business. And remember, self-actualization was actually the one at the very top, which many people avoid that because that's operating at your fullest potential. And it also includes creative activities. And what happens for most of us, we get into this routine of how we do things, they create the same results and we never step out to do anything different. I wanna share with you, if you are really looking to change, I want you to just take an opportunity to do one thing different because the resistance that I'm gonna share with you is the same resistance whenever you go to change something or whenever you need to do something different. Like when you're in your bed in the morning and your alarm clock goes off or maybe you 
phone and you know that it's really time for you to get up and you hit the alarm clock or um, you lay back down for a few minutes. If you just get in flow, remember I talked about flow earlier. I actually shared a post about it. If you get in flow and go ahead and get up, it's that same energy, that same um, impact, that same activation that you have to have to make yourself say, no, I'm getting up now. And I know, remember I told you guys, changing your, your life and your business is not easy, but it's really simple. And what we're actually breaking in, into is walking into our full potential. And it's as simple as things like when your alarm clock goes off and you hit the snooze button instead of resisting the urge to not get in flow and get up. I know that seems like really, really simple, but when you think about something that you want to change, whether it's your weight, right? Maybe you want to eat different. Um, maybe, you know, you want to market more on social media. Um, it could be to see a coach, whatever the thing is that's holding you back from what you know you need to do to change. Different from you creating the habit of, um, overcoming, right, of pushing past the resistance that comes up every time uh, there's something that you need to do in order for the change to happen. If you do something simple like getting up in the morning and, and saying, I'm not hitting the snooze button, I'm getting up now. It's the same type of energy that you're going to need for the changes that you need in your life. It's where you're getting out of default mode. Remember I talked about destiny by design or destiny by default. And then I also shared scientifically that our DNA has a default setting that we are supposed to have. Hey, Latoya, how are you? Default setting that um, gives instructions on how we'll turn out, who we're going to become, and those things can be impacted by what that's for the body, the person, who you are. But you are your brand, and your brand has a default setting, and it's operating off of it right now. So if there are results that you aren't getting in your business, if you know there are new things that you want to do, if you're at the space where you're like, listen, I've evolved. I've gone up the hierarchy, the triangle that I share with you all, and it's time for me to step into my full potential, which means that I have evolved, but I haven't allowed my brand to evolve. I want you to use the concept of pushing past the resistance that comes up every time you get ready to do something that you know in your heart. Guys, I believe in my heart that Many people don't evolve because they are resisting what they really feel in their in their heart. They're resisting doing the thing that they know they need or that they really desire. Um, they're resisting the invitation to step into a higher version of themselves. Remember I talked about it. I said the highest version of you is always giving you an invitation to step into design mode. But we resist it when we hear things like, um, man, I really want to buy this big ticket item for my parents. Some of you want to retire your parents. That's the highest version of you asking you to step up to position yourself to be able to do that. And every time we resist the change that's necessary or the thing that needs to happen, then we avoid stepping into the highest version of ourselves that can actually retire our parents or um, write the big checks for charity that may need another zero other than what you have now. It's always an invitation asking you to step into the highest version of yourself. And just like you have a DNA that has a setting, right? This is how we're supposed to be. There are things that impact um, you, which in turn impacts your brand. What at the at the center of who we are as we're building our businesses is um, our makeup, how we evolve, what we resist doing, then our business resists getting the, the impact or the awareness because of the things that we're resisting. And I want to share with you guys that all of the resistance that you're feeling are invitations. They're invita invitations for you to step into a higher version of yourself. My 3D Success Academy is open for enrollment. Um, tomorrow, the price will increase for enrollment. I want you to go to the top of the, the link and check it out. It's for women in business who want to grow their business and their life. And they know I need accountability.
the highest version of me or a higher version of me has been calling me to and to do things differently for a long time, but I need accountability. I need new answers. So maybe some of the things that I named are things that you've been desiring to do. It is going to require you to get out of default setting. There are going to be some things that you're going to have to do. They're not easy, but they are simple. They're not easy, but they are simple. And I'm going to provide tools for you to step into a more abundant space of thinking about your business and your life. Um, we definitely go over money mindset. There's a per, uh, prosperity portal. Prosperity portal is one of the segments inside 3D Success Academy where we talk about your money. We talk about the limiting beliefs that are keeping you from hitting that glass ceiling that you see. Like, why can't I reach this next income level that I desire? M much of it is because of that default setting in our, excuse me, in our DNA. But we can change the default setting with external things and mainly what you're hearing, the environments that you're in. I feel it's so important to get centered about what you really desire. And I, f I also feel that social media is a blessing and a curse because many people are, they've lost what their dream originally was. They lost what their idea of success really was. They aren't clear on who they are and who, the, who they desire to become which is in alignment with their business. I believe that your business should fund your lifestyle and not run your lifestyle. They should be in harmony um, and have alignment. Um, many of you that watch me feel that your business has a purpose bigger than just being a business. You feel that God has a purpose bigger than what you're actually doing. And when we step into that page, I um, named Maslow's Hierarchy. You guys can um, look that up. But the last stage is self-actualization. It's when you're operating at your full potential. These are the five basic.